Are you relieved? <laughs> You're no longer in charge of monetary policy when you well, see the sell-off uh, in markets? <laughs> I am adjusting to the new, to the new situation. But uh, stress is also good sometimes. Sometimes it is yes. good. What is the stress level on the markets and how much is that influencing central bankers around the world? Well, certainly, of course, uh, they do. Uh, central banks know that the transmission of monetary policy goes through the markets. And so uh, that's, uh, that's what they, they do. And we see some indicators of stress uh, here and there, uh, starting with the, the country where we are. <laughs> Uh, precisely. Uh, I mean, the Italian debt has been under pressure since May, in view mostly of political uncertainty, because up to now nothing changed in the fundamentals of, of, of the country. Uh, and the uh, more recent uh, positions announced by the Italian government have calmed down a little bit uh, the concerns uh, in the market, and that's important. The notion that uh, uh, Italy uh, has no intention of uh, challenging the European rules, uh, confront uh, those rules. Uh, that uh, will, uh, I'm sure, will calm down uh, markets uh, again. Are you worried that it can flare up again with your time at the European Central Bank? Mm. You're always concerned, right, about yes. uh, about politics going wrong. Well, yes, of course. For instance, uh, in 2011, there was a big, uh, say, market uh, concern, uh, almost panic, regarding the Spanish and the Italian debt, precisely, which led us uh, at the time to intervene even. Uh, but the situation was, of course, much worse uh, than, than now, no comparison. Uh, but just to say that central banks have to be uh, on the alert uh, with these things. Uh, and fortunately, the Italian government has, gave, has given these reassurances. Uh, let's wait now for the budget, because that will be the real test to see where uh, the policies uh, will lead the uh, fiscal position. Um, do you, if you're the, the, on the Federal Reserve, right, yeah. should the Federal Reserve actually look at the sell-off in emerging markets? Should central banks yeah. actually be very sensitive mm -hmm. to movements, especially if these movements are almost triggered by your own currency going yeah. higher? Well, it's a difficult question because, of course, legally, uh, central banks have a national mandate uh, defined by their legal, legal framework. So, uh, of course, uh, they take care as long as they see that uh, these uh, spillovers on other parts of the world then may have negative feedback on their own country. And I'm sure that they look into that from that perspective. Uh, but on the whole, they have to uh, look um, uh, foremost for their national uh, mandate, uh, of course. And that's what is happening. Uh, the dollar is going up uh, as a result of the combination of a very loose fiscal policy uh, uh, and monetary policy adjusting to the risks that that uh, creates. And that combination, we have seen historically, leads normally to an appreciation of the dollar, and that puts pressure on countries that have a lot of debt denominated in dollars. And that's what is uh, happening uh, right now. And it's uh, a risk, of course for the world economy. Yeah, and, and coupled with that, of course, you have these trade tensions possibly yes. oh, escalating yes. between China and the U.S. So how should sure. the Fed, but how should the ECB view uh, trade tensions and take them into account into their monetary policy? Well, the, they, they factor in the possible uh, negative effects on growth and so on the, uh, on the pressure on uh, uh, domestic demand and prices, ultimately, which, of course, the central banks concentrate on. Uh, and that's the way that is factored in. Uh, and it's certainly being factored in. Uh, I'm sure the Fed alluded to that in their uh, last uh, statement. Uh, but these are some of the risks present uh, in the situation. But the situation is now, for the world economy, is for the moment, is a good one because the uh, excessive fiscal stimulus in the U.S. plus the fiscal stimulus in China are supporting growth for a while. And that will be true, I think, uh, until the end of next year, uh, these effects. Uh, but it's a bit of a but sugar rush. what happens rush. after the end of yes. next year? Yes. Then uh, I think that in 2020, uh, the, the big risk is uh, uh, a downturn in the U.S. economy because the effects of the fiscal stimulus will end mm -hmm. by then. Mm -hmm. uh, the asset prices, which have uh, 
uh, gone up and it continued to go up as a result of the tax cuts that increased just for that reason the profits of firms, uh, that all that will end. And so with the overstretch valuations, we may have corrections that will trigger uh, you know, a downturn, which may be uh, even very significant in 2020. Okay, but a significant downturn, what would that mean for the global economy? Well, also the global economy will suffer the same uh, at that moment, of course, because the U.S. economy is so, uh, so important, and there is also, say, psychological uh, uh, contagion right. uh, to other um, asset markets in other parts of the world. As we have seen several times, there is a big correlation, and so uh, that may happen. Also, it's also true that that uh, the ECB and the Bank of Japan will be uh, uh, also tightening uh, their policies by then. So all that combined means that the big risk looking ahead it lies indeed in 2020 uh, if uh, these corrections will materialize and can trigger uh, a significant downturn in the world economy. So next week we celebrate the 10-year anniversary yeah. of the Lehman collapse. Mm -hmm. Would 2020 risk being as violent as no. the financial crisis? I really don't think no. so. I really don't think so. For several reasons, uh, uh, but mostly because the financial institutions have been strengthened meanwhile quite a lot and that's uh, very important also one never knows because uh, in 2008 there were some hidden things that uh, uh, most people didn't know about but it seems that this time there are no sort of toxic assets being uh, developed the way they were just uh, before the, uh, the the crisis of 2008. So if you look at the world economy yeah. right now, and if you look at China, mm. Japan, Europe, the rest of the world, what could trigger a financial crisis you know, similar to what we saw in 08? Well, similar, I see it very difficult because it was very deep. It happens every 50 years or something, but it's not something that one can expect uh, would happen with such a short uh, interval, let's say even 10 years. It's uh, on the short side. Uh, but it can be significant, of course. Uh, not just a mild, uh, mild correction, as we have seen uh, in other uh, phases of uh, our economies. But it can be significant because the overstretch of asset prices is really quite significant. And so it's a Minsky moment? Well, it, it, it can be the correction in financial markets. Uh, well, of course, it's very difficult to predict that sort of thing. But just looking to the fundamentals and how they evolve uh, until the end of next year, while the sugar rush of the fiscal stimulus will still produce an effect, and then afterwards, mm -hmm there will be uh, a reassessment uh, of, of those valuations and certainly the earnings of the firms will not continue to jump as they have jumped now as a result of the tax cuts.